ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا نشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله بالغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك وبعد فإن أفضل الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة في دين الله بدعة وكل بدعة في دين الله ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اللهم أجرنا من النار My brothers, my sisters, respected elders and community members I begin with the greeting of Islam, the greeting of Salam May the peace and the blessings and the mercy of Allah be with you And with your family members and with your loved ones I begin by testifying that none is worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by acknowledging and proclaiming and declaring and testifying that the beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger, the final prophet and a servant of Allah. Reminding myself and you that whomever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomever is allowed to go astray due to their own wrongful actions and sinful desires and inclinations, none can guide back except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, we begin this khutbah with a dua for the people of Palestine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be a part of their struggle for justice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to see justice prevail, Ya Rabb Ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be from those who stand up against all forms of genocide, displacement, dispossession, and colonization, Ya Rabb Ameen. And I continue by reminding myself and you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests by giving and by withholding, by taking and by immensely providing. And in all of these moments there are tests. So we say as Muslims, Alhamdulillah for what Allah has given, Alhamdulillah for what Allah has taken, Alhamdulillah for all the opportunities and the challenges and the tests. Alhamdulillah for the moments that bring us closer to him and the moments that allow us to ask the difficult questions which motivate us to seek him and Alhamdulillah for the moments of ease and joy and the opportunities that we also experience and I ask Allah to allow us not to take them for granted but to use what Allah has given us to do khair and to leave khair behind وَبَتَغِ فِي مَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكِ and brothers and my sisters, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights those who pass away as martyrs, Allah reminds in the Quran, do not think that they are dead. Rather, they're alive with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're provided for in ways that you cannot imagine. And so we ask Allah to accept all of those who pass away defending this cause as martyrs, Ya Rabb Ameen. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide for them in ways that no human being can. Right after all of these ayat about martyrdom in Surah Al-Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَلَا يَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ لِأَنفُسِهِمْ إِنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ لِيَزْدَادُوا إِثْمَا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do not ever think that when power and wealth and control and what seems to be domination, when Allah gives all of these powers and wealth to people who are far away, to people who are corrupt, people who are misusing all of that, do not think that Allah is giving or providing for them because it is a good thing. Rather, Allah is giving them so that their sin becomes manifest and clear. Their atrocities become so clear that there's no confusion or doubt 
about where their intentionality is or where their actions lie. And the example that I give, subhanAllah, imagine you're driving down the highway. And as you're driving down the highway, you are driving a little bit above the speed limit. And the police officer notices you. But chooses not to pull you over at 125, 130. Gives you a little bit of time. Now, a good person, a person who has integrity, will think, Allah gave me a second chance. Let me fix let me rectify. Let me go back. When Allah gives you time and you have goodness in you, it causes you to reflect and turn back naturally without a slap on the wrist. You yourself become your own self-correction. But what happens when that police officer chooses to just, I'm going to see how far you take this. I'm going to let you be. Go. Go all out. So, if a person who has little integrity, what they do, they think, oh, maybe the cop is busy with something else. Maybe I got away with it. Maybe they can't see me. So now you're not driving 120, 130, 140, 150. You go all out, 160, 190, 210, 240, however far you can get. And when you're finally dinged and caught at that speed of 250 or whatnot, no longer can you say, oh, my, uh, my foot was just on the pedal a little too heavy. Oh, it was just, uh, you know, I was just having a day. I'm sorry. I was lost in thought. And the fine, the punishment at that level is not going to be what? It's not going to be an easy one. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of the same argument. When you're caught with a small act of oppression or injustice. Oh, you know what? It was an accident. It was not meant to be. You know, oh, it was a, an act of self-defense. All of these actions or excuses that you can provide. But when it's so clear and it's so vivid, and Allah gives you chance after chance after chance and gives you so much power, so much capacity, almost it seems limitless, it is easy to be, subhanAllah, deluded by that sense of power and it's easy to transgress, and it's easy for the real heart and the real intentions, the real beliefs that you have, the real motivations, the real subhanAllah aspirations that you have to manifest. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the same ayat, in the same surah, لِيَمِيزَ اللَّهُ الْخَبِيثَ مِنَ الطَّيِّبِ حَتَّى يَمِيزَ اللَّهُ الْخَبِيثَ مِنَ الطَّيِّبِ Allah is not going to allow things just to pass until he makes it so clear where people stand. Where those who are good or have good intentions stand. And those who have very poor intentions stand. And it's in moments like this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows for reality to be filtered. And commitments to be differentiated. And people's actual intentions and positions to be very clear. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to have the wisdom and the insight in moments of difficulty, in moments where we are at the receiving end of oppression and injustice, I ask Allah to allow us to have the wisdom not to question our faith, not to question our connection with Allah, but rather to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be motivated to rejuvenate that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I've mentioned this to you before, subhanAllah. What's amazing is sometimes you have people that are looking at what's going on in these difficult situations and we as observers we're saying subhanallah all of this that's happening to the people of palestine where is allah how is this how is this possible where is what's going on this doesn't make sense i'm questioning my connection with allah i'm questioning my reality i'm questioning my faith so you have a moment of crisis and self-doubt a faith crisis yet the irony the amazing thing is the person who's going through that difficulty, the person who's actually experiencing the oppression, they themselves are saying, Alhamdulillah. The mother who buries her children, she says, Alhamdulillah, he's the one who gave me the children to begin with. So all gratitude to you, Allah. You gave them and you took them back. All I have to say is, Alhamdulillah, that you gave me the chance to spend some days and moments with them. The father who's holding the lifeless body of his daughter or son with tears rolling down the eyes, 
saying alhamdulillah that I at least had the opportunity of holding my son, my daughter. Some people never had a son, never had a daughter. Alhamdulillah that at least I have my connection with Allah and that did not disappear. So you have the person who's going through that difficulty, their iman is strengthening because they see reality for what it is. And we on the observation side, we're observing some of us, subhanAllah, because our aqidah, our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not settled, has not taken the time to find deep roots and have not studied the way that history unfolds well enough. Or because we lack that wisdom or experience or we lack that, subhanAllah, familiarity with how the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works. Or because we're in a moment of ghafla, lack of awareness or lack of reality, lack of subhanAllah presence in our connection with Allah, we might be justifying our absence from Allah using their pain when their pain is the fuel for their closeness to Allah. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to hold on strongly, Ya Rabb Ameen. And to never waver, Ya Rabb Ameen. And to not doubt or lose focus, Ya Rabb Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. And my brothers and my sisters, in moments like this, it is important to go back to the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to go back to the importance of intentionality. You know, sometimes you feel limited, you feel hopeless because of what's going on. You feel limited, you feel hopeless because of what's going on. But an Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he reminded us to focus our most efforts on building and constructing and fixing and restoring as we said in the khutbas before, and it begins with the intentions. Ali ibn Abbas radiallahu an, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna allaha katab al-hasanati wa al-sayyati, thumma bayyana thalika, faman hamma bi hasanatin falam ya'amalha, katabaha allahu lahu indahu hasanatan kamilatan, fa'in huwa hamma biha fa'amilaha, katabaha allahu lahu indahu, عشر حسنات إلى سبعمائة ضعف إلى أضعاف كثيرة ومن هم بسيئة فلم يعملها كتبها الله عنده حسنة كاملة فإن هو هم بعملها كتبها الله له سيئة واحدة What an amazing hadith النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم he says look at the generosity of Allah Allah made it clear what the good actions and good deeds are and what the bad actions and the bad deeds are. And the one who intends to do a good deed. The one who intends to do a good deed. But for whatever reason is limited from doing that good deed. Because of practicality, because of reality, because of obstructions, because of lack of capacity, because of lack of opportunities. Allah will write for that person a good deed. So imagine you intend to do a good deed. You intend to help somebody in need. You intend to help your Palestinian brother and sister. But you cannot because of limitations. But you keep that intention alive and sincere. And you don't waver in that intention. You don't waver in that intention. And that intention is honest. And you keep working to the best of, you, of your ability based on what Allah has given you. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that person will get the ajr. One ajr for that intention. So that intention will be accepted by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. As if you have done it. As if you've actually helped. And if the person intends to do a good deed and does it, Allah will write for them 10 times the reward. Up to 70 times the reward. Up to 100 times the reward. Up to 700 times the reward. And beyond, based on the sincerity of the intention and the effort. And this applies, subhanAllah, to all of our aspects. Look at the generosity of Allah. And if somebody intends to do a bad deed, but doesn't do it, they hold themselves back, they reflect, they think, and they stop, Allah will write for them a good deed. It's as if they've done a good deed. So imagine you intend to do a bad deed, a passing thought, a passing whisper, and then you hold yourself. No, I'm not going to do that. Allah writes for you a good deed. And if you do it, Allah writes it as if it's one bad deed. So imagine, look at the reward of Allah. You intend to do good. 
And you do it 70 times, 100 times, 700 times the ajr and beyond. Because Allah is generous. You intend, you intend to do one bad deed. And you stop yourself, it's written as a good deed. You intend to do one bad deed. And you do it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes it as one. The generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he added, giving us subhanallah, another example, another few examples of this. He says, مَنْ سَأَلَ اللَّهُ الشَّهَادَةَ بِصِدْقٍ بَلَّغَهُ اللَّهُ مَنَازِلَ الشُّهَدَاءِ وَإِنْ مَاتَ عَلَى فِرَاشِهِ The person who asks Allah for the level or for the reward of martyrdom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them that reward even if they die on their, on their beds. Imagine they pass away in their bed, the comfort of their own home. But they said, Ya Allah, I want to be from those who resist and stand up against all forms of injustice. And just because of the intention of standing up and they were limited, they could not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the ajr. And this applies to all the ibadat. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَهُوَ يَنْوِي أَنْ يَقُومَ يُصَلِّي مِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَغَلَبَتُ عَيْنَهُ عَيْنُهُ فَغَلَبَتُ عَيْنُهُ حَتَّى يُصْبِحَ كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مَا نَوَى وَكَانَ نَوْمُهُ صَدَقَةً عَلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, the person who intends to get up to do two rak'ahs at night, and because they were so sleepy, they were so tired, the intention was sincere, but they were not able to get up. Allah will give them the reward of the two rak'ahs and the sleep is considered to be a gift from Allah for them. So imagine just by intending to get up at night and the intention has to be sincere. Intending to get up for qiyam, intending to give sadaqah, intending to build something, intending to build a project, initiate a project. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us to keep that intention alive in each and every one of us. Because where does all action emanate from? All action emanates from intentions. And if we're honest in intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it happen or will give us the reward as if it happened. And Allah mentions this in the Quran many times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Anfal, In ya'lami Allahu fi qulubikum khayra, yu'tikum khayran mimma ukhida minkum wa yaghfir lakum. This is applying to those who are caught as war captives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes the good, if you manifest the good in your heart, the good in your sincerity, Allah will give you better than what you've lost and Allah will forgive you. So imagine just having the intention, Allah will give you better than what you've lost, what you've had to give up, what you've had to endure, and Allah will forgive you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions also in Surah Al-Fatih, فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا وَمَغَانِمَ كَثِيرَةً يَأْخُذُونَهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah saw the good in their hearts. So He allowed tranquility to descend upon them. And Allah allowed them to reap from the bounties of this world many, many more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala iterates again in Surah Al-Anfal. وَلَوْ عَلِمَ اللَّهُ فِيهِمْ خَيْرًا لَأَسْمَعَهُمْ And if Allah saw good, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw the good in their hearts, meaning if they had good in their hearts that was manifest, that was clear, Allah would give them the opportunity to listen. Meaning imagine somebody who's misguided, somebody who's far away from Allah. Allah says if this sincerity in that person's heart, Allah would give them the chance to listen, to receive a reminder that touches, to receive a reminder that hits. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala iterates this again in Surah Al-Isra. رَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا فِي نُفُوسِكُمْ إِن تَكُونُوا صَالِحِينَ فَإِنَّهُ كَانَ لِلْأَوَّابِينَ غَفُورًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what truly lies in your hearts. He knows what your true intentions are. And if you have goodness in that state of heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to forgive you and will continue to turn to you even after the most difficult of times and after the most difficult of departures. So the sincerity in the intention is key, my brothers and my sisters. And it's not just key for getting the reward, but for having anything accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Inna Allah la yaqbalu min al-amali illa ma kana khalisan wa b'tughiya bihi wajha Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wajhu Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only accept from the actions 
what is done purely for his sake and what is done solely for his acceptance and for his pleasure. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our intentions sincere, Ya Rabbi Ameen. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these moments of difficulty, in these moments of pain, in these moments of challenge, I ask Allah to allow us to be at least from those who have the intention, Ya Allah, I am limited, I am helpless, but I care and I'm sincere in my care and I'm sincere in my commitment. Ya Allah, accept that sincerity. And Ya Allah, give me the opportunity for that sincerity to manifest in a constructive way, in a way that is pleasing to Ya Rabb Ameen. And Ya Allah, do not allow my limitation or my helplessness in this moment to cripple me because I know your wisdom, I know your power, and I have very little faith in me, but I have absolute faith in you. I have little faith in my capacity, but I believe firmly in your capacity. And as long as we have that sincere intention and sincere desire and it's awake and it's alive and that desire or that intent in its sincerity never diminishes, we know absolutely that Allah will provide a way out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرُزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغُ أَمْرِهُ قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدْرًا Allah says, the one who has taqwa of Allah, Allah will pave for them a way out from where they least expect Allah will provide. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed for every affair to have its time, its place, its duration. Every moment shall come to pass. And this too shall come to pass. What, ma what matters is the desire and the intent and the sincerity and the effort that we had along the way. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم السائل المسلمين فاستغفروه إن الغفور رحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على من اصطفى My brothers and my sisters as we mentioned many times النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم he was optimistic and he loved optimism and he encouraged the companions to be optimistic. And he said to them, don't be bearers of bad news. Be bearers of good news. Don't limit what Allah has made vast. Stay positive, stay optimistic, and do the best that you can in every moment possible. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find for you a way out. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to remain united, Ya Rabbi Ameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring our hearts and bodies and minds together, Ya Rabbi Ameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be, as the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says, the believer who's strong is better and more beloved to Allah than the believer who's weak. And there's good in them both. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to mobilize so there's strength in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And there's dignity in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and that begins with each and every one of us as individuals turning to him with sincerity and working together collectively with a clear vision. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite us upon that which pleases him, Ya Rabbi Ameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to see a free, liberated Palestine, Ya Rabbi Ameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to see a Palestine that is self-determining, Ya Rabbi Ameen. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us as we mourn and care for them not to forget our local obligations and local commitments and day-to-day -day responsibilities. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Allahumma hadi shababana wa nisaana wa rijalana wa aghfir li walidina wa rahamum kama rabbawna sigara. Allahumma aghfir li al-muslimina wa al-muslimat wa raham al-mu'minina wa al-mu'minat al-ahyai minhum wa al-amuat inna ka sami'un qareebu mujibu al-da'awat. Allahumma ansur al-musra'afina fi Filistin. Allahumma ansur al-musra'afina fi Sudan. Allahumma ansur al-musra'afina fi kulli makan ya Rabb al-alameen. اللهم اشف مريضهم وداو جريحهم وتقبل شهيدهم يا رب العالمين اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها مولاها يا رب العالمين May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us يا رب آمين I'm going to ask inshallah that we stay a minute back after the khutbah uh, after the salah inshallah because we are doing a very quick fundraiser active fundraiser for the washroom that is being built so for those of you have a moment inshallah will not take more than a minute and a half Please stay back so we can all contribute. For those of you who have to rush on the way, please remember, inshallah, that we are renovating the, the washroom for the sisters. So whatever you can, inshallah, contribute to, may Allah accept it. 
do give something on the way out. Jazakumullah khair wa aqim salah. Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitaba maquta.